All right, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to today's homeschool video. So today I'm gonna do like, um, I think like a homeschool with us like throughout the week, just to show you what it looks like for us to do different things with the kids in like the course of at least a couple days. For example, today it's not like the start of the morning. Today it's like five o'clock at night. And I took the kids earlier today to the library and they had these really cute little activities set up there at the library. So it was like a DIY make your own bird feeder. So we're gonna make those, like Bridie's gonna make them now with Joe with her dad. And that's gonna be like their little educational activity today. So I think all you need is, you're supposed to use like a paper towel or like a toilet paper roll. We didn't have, so I found like a little poster board thing and Joe cut it up. But it seems pretty simple. You need peanut butter, bird seed, and like some kind of like a twine or something. And then basically what you do is you cover the paper towel roll in peanut butter and then attach, like add the seeds on top. So that's gonna be their activity. They can learn about birds. We love birds over here and all of that. So you guys can get to it. Step one. It says directions. Number one, using a popsicle stick or use a knife. Cover outside of paper roll with peanut butter. It says step two is roll the peanut butter cover paper roll in the bird seed until covered. But we're gonna do it with different. We're gonna sprinkle them on the cover. Does that work? Yeah. That's How's that sound? That's good. Right, evenly distribute it. That's okay if we run out. We can just pick some from the. I don't know. Okay, I got a better way to get that. Wow, look at that. We really sprinkle that. That um, looks quite lovely. I'm sorry. Jackson's you hate to say it, but when you run out, we'll grab Jackson's. Yeah. Awesome. This was so cute. The library always has like a bunch of these little like take home like activities. So when I saw that one, I was like, this would be perfect, something that they can do. And then it also had some kind of like a little paper here to identify like the different birds. So we can do that together too. A little DIY bird feeder. And are you supposed to tie it with like I do? Mm -hmm. Tie it close, we're not. And now it's a ribbon. Nice. All right, now we gotta figure out where we're gonna put it. All right, jump off, let's go put it out. Meanwhile, you guys, Jackson has been very content over here. He was actually playing some apps on the iPad earlier. He was playing the Peppa Pig app and there was like a really cute activity. Um, like one of the games had him like sorting colors. So he's content here. He's getting a little bit of iPad time. So that's totally cool. We brought the bird feeder out here next to our real bird feeder or the one that we bought at the store. And so here we go. Now she can watch it and we can kind of see like if the birds like totally disregard this one or if they eat the regular bird food. But this was a cute little activity, something super easy. Yeah, that's just one of the reasons why I like this concept of, you know, of homeschooling. The fact that it doesn't always have to be the same thing every day. You can incorporate math and you know reading and all the other things that you would get with like a more traditional um you know curriculum but you kind of do it at your own pace you kind of figure out what your kids are interested in and you get to do stuff like this like i would consider that we were doing a little bit of homeschooling stuff this morning and that's because i was out in the garden and riley was helping me in the garden and you know things like that that we just incorporate into our day she's learning stuff she's being super helpful she was helping me weed outside and she's learning like about the roots of the plants and all the things so i wanted to at least make sure to you know mention that in today's video if you guys haven't seen my first homeschool with me video i will have it linked down below in the description box i've been trying to do more of these homeschool with us videos just to give you an idea of what homeschooling looks like for us it's going to look very different for everybody that's again the beauty of homeschool the fact that it's very um flexible too right so like we don't sit down at the same time every single day so anyway if you're here for it if you like this kind of content make sure that you're subscribed because i have a lot of plans to continue to do more of these videos and hopefully they'll be a little different every day something super random but that kind of also goes along with this concept of learning things but in a different way so if you guys follow on instagram or you guys follow the channel here you guys know that riley's obsessed with sharks so when 
we were at Target the other day, they had this super cute set. I'll link it if I can find it. But it was a set of a bunch of different sharks, like different kinds of sharks. I honestly do not know all their names, but she does. And so this was something that she was super excited about because now she has like the figurines. We filled up this bin of water. Her and Jackson were both playing with it earlier today. And there's more sharks that are inside my house somewhere. And then it's something, you know, interactive that she can play with and she gets to learn more about all the sharks and I can accompany it with like one of her shark books and we can learn more facts about sharks. But yeah, this is out here on the deck for now. And then something else that we are working on right now is the fact that my lovely mother <laughs> sent us these little caterpillars, like the grow your own butterflies kind of deal. I wasn't expecting that she was going to send them, but now we have them and it's something that we've always wanted to do anyway. So I'm glad that she sent them. So now Riley and Jackson both get to check out the caterpillars every day. And we're going to kind of go through the whole, you know, evolution of the caterpillars and hopefully watch them turn into butterflies as long as they don't die in the process. It's actually pretty cool because um, like they've gotten fatter, like as the days go by, they start eating whatever is in here and then they're like getting bigger and fatter. So we've been talking about the caterpillars here in this house for the last couple days. So this is something that you can buy on Amazon. So again, if I can find links to all this stuff, I will link them down below for you guys. But it came with like the, um, like the little house for the butterflies for once we get to that point in the process. It probably, I, I honestly don't even know how long it's gonna take, but that's something that we are introducing to you know learning here in this house. And then what I thought was really cool is I was following somebody on Instagram today, or I was watching a YouTube video. I was watching Kendra Atkins. Um, she has a lot of homeschool stuff on her channel too. And she mentioned that she had bought the Treehouse Nature Study. Um, it's like a whole curriculum for summer. I ended up buying it too, but I also saw that on their website. They had a free, like $0 downloadable little section that has to do with the um, with the butterflies and with the caterpillars. So I was like, this is perfect. It's like a week long study, you know, like unit study on butterflies and the caterpillars. And so I printed it out. Again, this is something totally free, so I'll link to it. And then it has like instructions on like different things to do every day. This is part of the spring curriculum, but because it's free, she only gives you like one of the weeks from spring, but it doesn't matter because that's all I really wanted anyway. So you see it says week five, caterpillars, moths, and butterflies. And then there's like songs that you can learn and poems. And so she breaks it down for you. She gives you like a list of um, different books that she would recommend, like The Very Hungry Caterpillar, Butterfly Park, fiction and nonfiction books. So this was like a great thing that, you know, I can now follow, even if it's just for a week, a couple days, I can take a look at this and go doing this with her and with Jackson if he wants to like, you know, join in. And then this is a poem, Caterpillar, and we'll read through this every day. And there's like different activities that you do with it every day. There's this, which I'm not sure exactly what it is. And then different pictures that I'm going to show her. This is the life cycle of a moth. So this is something cool that we can use alongside something like this and just get a little bit more like education from it. So I think that something like this will be great because we've been working through um, the Horizons curriculum that I'm sure you might still see in this video because we're not done with it yet. And so we still have a couple different letters and lessons that we're working through. But in addition to the learning letters and learning basic math skills, what I find that a lot of the curriculums don't have is like nature science like things that aren't like just tracing letters and stuff like that so when you find some resources like this especially free ones i'm all about that and incorporating that into their learning so that's gonna probably be it for today i'll see you guys tomorrow Hello, guys. all right so where is the ostrich you know which one of these is an ostrich yeah this is definitely an ostrich. which one how do you know that that one is an ostrich because that's the long legs Mm -hmm. And he can't fly, but he has feathers. Oh, wow. So what letter is underneath the ostrich? Um, C. All right, so you're going to put C. Where's one right here. Which one is a parrot? How about... This one. That one looks like a parrot. How do you know that that one's a parrot? Because it's on a branch and it has feathers. Well, I mean, all birds, I think, have feathers. But, okay. Now, how about a pigeon? Which one of those looks like a pigeon? Would it be this one or this one? Which one looks like a pigeon? That one. No, this one is a pigeon. This is that one is the one that Mimi likes. And it's F. 
crow. I get to write a pigeon. An F over here where it says pigeon. Underneath the crow is D. D. So let's put a D here where it says crow. All right, guys. So it is the next day. Um, we spent the morning at the park with the kids. So I've found, if you're new to the channel, you might not know, but if you're regular here, then you hear me talk about it all the time. I found like a mom group nearby um, of just a couple moms that have like small kids in the neighborhood. And so we meet every so often and the kids get to play and we go to parks and stuff. So that's been a huge blessing because I think one of the biggest things that you know you get told when you talk about like homeschooling or the idea of homeschooling it's like then how are kids going to socialize um believe me like you can find ways to have your kids socialize it doesn't have to be all day every day but um we try to at least see other humans at least once or twice a week where the kids get to play and hang out so we did that this morning they went to the park they were having the best time of their life. I was sweating. I was like drenched in sweat because it's so hot out. But that's what we did this morning. And now I told Riley that when we got home, we had to work on some actual like book work. So we are going to work on some book work. I've got to get everything prepared. I have I think most of everything that I need here on the table. Our caterpillars are getting larger by the day. Um, they're getting huge. There's actually one like on the top lid that you see. I think that's where they're going to go when um, they start to form chrysalises. So I don't know if he's gonna start doing that, but we are keeping an eye on these guys and they are so gross looking. But those are our caterpillar friends. All right, Riley, let's get to work. So we are picking up where we last left off on our Horizons preschools for three um, curriculum. I am almost done with this. We have just a few more lessons, but that's one of the things also that I like about homeschool is that like we can take our sweet time with this and we can do this throughout summer. Like it's not like we have to be done within, you know, the specific school year. We can extend this into summer, which means that I don't have to be as stressed out to make sure that I get everything in, you know, during the school calendar or whatever. So today we are working on the letter U. We'll walk through this like I did last time, but we are going to start with the Bible reading for that lesson. So we're on lesson 35. So today's from Luke, I don't know, Luke 19, 28 through 44. So just like last time, I'm gonna read the little passage from the Bible, do a little prayer, and that is how we'll start off our book work and then we'll get to the actual worksheets. So Jesus traveled to the city capital of Israel named Jerusalem. Jesus rode into the city on a donkey. Do you know what a donkey is? It's not really a horse, but it looks like a horse, right? Mm -hmm. So in the past, a king of Israel would enter the city on a donkey. The crowds of people cheered as Jesus entered. They spread their coats on the ground in front of him as he went by them. They waved palm branches as flags. The crowd yelled, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Not everyone was happy to see the crowds cheering Jesus. Some didn't believe Jesus was God's son. They wanted him to stop preaching to the people. They also started to plan ways to hurt Jesus. Do you see the crowds of people? Mm -hmm. What are they doing? They're yelping for Jesus. And what are they waving? At Jesus. Yeah, but what are they holding up in their hands? What? Are those the palm leaves? Yeah. Palm branches? Yeah, because it's Jesus's um, palm day. Jesus's palm day? <laughs> we call the day that Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem, Palm Sunday. Do you know how to say Palm Sunday? Palm Sunday. Do you remember when we went to church and we got the palms? Yeah. Yeah. So here's a prayer. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Thank you for being our king. Thank you for being our king. Help us to praise you. Help us to praise you. Like the crowds of people in Jerusalem. Like the crowds of people in Jerusalem. Thank you for giving me a voice to sing your praises. Thank you for giving me a voice for praise. Amen. 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 All right, so can we start off by writing your name? Remember, we're going to start off writing your name, and it's going to look like this, okay? We're going to do capital R, and then little i, little l, little e, and little y, okay? Okay. I'll Let's try. try that. So we're working on getting her to do like capital R and then lowercase letters for the other ones because she's kind of mastered doing her name all capital but she's gonna try to do it the right way, which is capital R, capital the first letter, and then lowercase the other letters. Righty, that looks great. Good job. Now it's time to close. So you see, off. I wrote it up top for her and then she copied it. So that looks great, good job. So now this is an, what is this? Umbrella. Umbrella starts with the letter. U. Good job. You wanna color that? 
Okay. okay. You colored the umbrella. The next page says circle what comes first in each group. So this is like about sequencing, which is really good. So what comes first, a baby or a kid? What comes first in this group right here? The baby first or like what comes first? Oh, is the baby. Why does that one come first? Because he grows up. Because then he grows up. Good job. Yeah. How about in this group? There's like a baby chicken and then a regular chicken. Yeah. Which one comes first? The baby chicken. The baby chicken? Because it grows grow up. Mm -hmm. What about in this picture? That one comes first? Why? Because. What is it? It's growing. Right. It's a tree. And this, this one. Because it's yummy, Papa. So this came first because the food was all on the plate first, yeah. right? And then it's empty because he ate it all, right? Yeah. Okay, then how about this picture? You've got a pile of dirty clothes and then the washing machine. So which one comes first? Which one comes first? Over here, you got dirty clothes and a washing machine. So which one comes first? Good job. Okay, so while Riley works on writing her name again, I'm gonna try to set up a little activity for Jackson. We've been working on just introducing just some basic letters to Jackson. He's two and a half, by the way. If you're new here, Riley is four and a half. I've been told that instead of working on like A, B, C, D, you should try to work on their name, like have them, like Jackson, I would have him focus on the letters J-A-C-K-S-O-N. I'm gonna do that later this week, but today I just wanted to see if like a very simple activity would work. Kind of playing into his love for cars, so doing like something that he might enjoy because it's got to do with his cars. I don't know how it's gonna work out, but here's the general idea. So I have like four post-it notes. Um, you could do this in so many different ways, but this is literally what I have. So That's I'm gonna make here. like little um, parking spots for the cars. So I'm gonna do A, B, C, and then D. And then I'm gonna use these little um, hey, post-it notes it. too. Good job, I'll be with you in one second. I'm gonna use these little post-it notes that I cut up and I'm gonna put A, B, C, D on them too. And then I'm gonna attach these to his cars. It would work better if I had like little circle stickers or like little circles that I could cut out but I don't have that, so I'm just using what I've got. So I'm gonna go put these on some of his cars and then see if he can match the cars to the little parking spots. In the meantime, right, he's gonna work on tracing. So every lesson has like a less, like a, a page where they're tracing the letter that they're working on. So she's gonna trace capital U and lowercase u. Let's go do this with Jackson. All right, Jackson, I got a little activity for you. So I've got a basket of like a bunch of his random cars. Come here, Gordo, sit down next to mama. Okay? We're gonna do a little activity. Yeah? Okay, I'll be right there. I'm just putting, literally, <laughs> the little post-it notes on his cars. So look, these are parking spots of all the letters. I'm gonna put them in order here. So we're gonna do A, B, C, and D. So can you grab the cars and put them in the parking spots? So like this one, what letter is this? B. B. So where does B go? Let's put it on the parking spot like this. Beep, beep. B goes on B. Now how about that one? That's C. B. Good job. That one's upside down. So let's put it like that. All right, where does that one go? A. A. Oh, you're trying to move it like this, Riley? So it seems like I've got to try to work on putting them like the right way on the cars, but good job, Gordo. So that concept is something that he at least grasps so that's great so you can get creative with this you can um make like little parking spots with even um like uh, washi tape or some kind of like little tape on the floor you can make little parking spots and then have the cars go into their corresponding parking spots you could get um, magnet tiles too and make like little houses that have a letter like we love magnet tiles but this was something that i thought like we could do some playing through the things that he likes to do. Right now, it's looking like he just wants to be on the iPad, which is fine because he's watching educational shows for the most part. He's learned a lot through them. Um, and then also he's started to learn how to use like a lot of the apps that Riley uses on the iPad. So like the Peppa Pig app, which does like color sorting. Like there's actually a lot of really educational stuff that you can do with them on the iPads. But 
this I think is a really cute concept. So think of stuff like this, what interests your child and then how can you use those things in a way that they can maybe learn something. Okay, so the next worksheet that Riley's working on says to circle the pictures of good behavior. So circle the pictures of good behavior and then put an X on bad behavior. Think you can do that? Yeah. So circle good behavior. What do you think is good behavior? This one. What are they doing? He's just painting. Well, I guess that's kind of ambiguous. Depends on if they wanted him to be painting on the walls. Hey, come look. Putting an X on the bad behaviors. Ooh, that one is a bad one. Yeah. So what is this? What is that? That she or her is crying. And that's bad behavior? Yeah. Her didn't clean up. Her's making a mess outside. And this one's yelling. <laughs> They're yelling at each other and fighting? Yeah. What is this good behavior of? They're shopping together. That's good behavior. And this one? He's digging in the snow. Maybe he's doing like his chores? Yeah. And then how about them? They're, ba they're, they're helping baking mom. And they're playing nicely? Yeah. Very good. So this activity, this page, says match the activity that takes place in the morning, afternoon, and night. So this is something good to work on the different times of the day. Playing outside. Do you play outside in the morning, the afternoon, or at night? We play in the morning. Well, sometimes we play in the morning, but look at all the other pictures. Okay, so she's having a fit because she sees that there is like a sky in the afternoon and she's not quite understanding why that's not the morning. So that sometimes happens over here where I have to then like explain to her and she's having a hard time understanding a concept. She thinks she's right, I'm sure, if you are also a homeschooler. You feel my pain and you know, we just have to work through it, but I'm not gonna have like her full blown um, being upset on the camera. So we're just gonna work through that. All right, so we went over that again. Since I see that that's like a concept where it's like a little bit, you know, she needs, she needs some more work on that concept. I'll kind of flag that market as maybe something else that we can work on this week, um, something that we can work on later today. So I'll make a note to come back to it so that we can, you know, continue to practice it in ways that make more sense to her. Okay, so the next page over here, this one is a little bit more of like an interactive um, like activity. It says cut out the palm branches at the bottom of the page and glue them on the picture. So I'm gonna cut these out really quick so she can glue them on here and she can work on, you know, her gluing skills and all of that. So that's kind of like the arts and craftsy kind of activity for the day. Can you grab your glue for me, please? Um, because you're gonna use it no, I'm when gonna, you do this. No, I'm gonna hold it. Okay. So, what is that a picture of? Do you remember the Bible story that we were reading? Yeah. You want to tell me about it? Yeah. The picture has palm leaves, and Jesus draw that. So Jesus was coming into the town. What was he riding on? A donkey. And everybody was waving there. What was everybody waving? They were waving for Jesus. No, but what were they waving in the in the air? What were they waving? Um, they were waving palm leaves. That's right. What do you like about Jesus? That Jesus is a miracle. He makes miracles? Mm -hmm. He performed miracles? Mm -hmm. What was one of the miracles that he performed? Do you remember? Mm -hmm. Like which one? The eyes. The... Like when he healed somebody that was blind? Mm-hmm. So now that the person could see, mm -hmm. that was a miracle. And also, Jesus calmed down the wind. That, that was a miracle. Yeah, that's right. That's very cool. All right, so here are your palm leaves. And then you can just put them on the picture wherever everybody, wherever somebody ha is waving their hand so that they can welcome Jesus. And then we have to wait until this picture dries. Mm-hmm. Now maybe we can hang it up for Dada. But I need, need to hang it up on the wall. Okay. Because there's not that much space in the fridge, right? Because it's lots of things. Okay, we can find another place. All right, so that is the last worksheet from that book. And then I was just looking through the corresponding like student workbook companion that I showed you guys last time. So for lesson 35, this is actually perfect because it's an activity where we work again on the concepts of morning, afternoon, and night. So I'm going to cut out these cards and then she has to work on matching when the different activities no, take place. You want to cut them out for me? Okay, you can cut them out. 
and then we'll work on that for some extra practice on that concept. So I didn't even know that that was here. So that is good. So while she does that, this was the actual lesson plan for lesson 35. If you needed some other ideas of things, you know, that you could do. So the memory verse was blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. And then we went through all the different worksheets, but the extra stuff that we didn't go over today, um, these are like the things that I can think about incorporating into the week for the lesson. So language arts, it says, um, work on some basic directions with the students. Examples include up, down, ahead, behind, forward, and backward. You can do this through a game like Simon Says. So that's something that we can do. For science, it says take a metal cookie sheet, some magnetic items, and others which are non-magnetic. Have the students place the items on the sheet to determine which items are magnetic and which are not. That's a good one. For math, take a deck of playing cards with only the numbers 1 through 10. Ask the students to pick two cards and then have the students determine which number is larger or smaller, um, or if they are the same. So all of these are actually really good ideas. Shapes, it says take sidewalk chalk, draw a large triangle, a circle, and a square. Direct the students in jumping in and out of the different shapes. So I actually did that activity with the kids not too long ago, um, and I had no idea that it was here in the lesson plan. So now I'm like proud of myself that I, you know, I did that and I didn't, you know, see it here in the lesson plan. But that's something that was super fun that they enjoyed. I took just some regular chalk that we had and I drew different shapes because I'm working on shapes with Jackson. And I had him like not jump into them, but I t would tell him like, okay, run to the, sh the heart, run to the triangle. And we were working on things like that. So maybe we'll do that later today if they're bored and want to go outside. That's something very easy that we can do. And again, it's like that whole concept of playing through learning, playing through things that they would normally be doing. I don't want them just sitting at a table all day. I want them active playing with the things that they like to do, but they're still learning things. So then there's other stuff here too. Manners, it says discuss and demonstrate to the students how to take turns. Physical education, have the students practice running on their tiptoes. Outside activity, go to a playground. Well, we did that today. Practice skills of balancing, climbing, and swinging. And then creative cooking, prepare foods that are sour, salty, and sweet, and then help the students describe the taste of each item. So we're not gonna do those, but some of these I may mark to come back to whenever we are bored and need something to do. Okay, so she's getting a little antsy at the table. And so whenever that happens, I just try to move somewhere else. We can do some of this work on the floor, at her little table. We can kind of move around so that we're not just stuck in the same place. So we've got those little pictures that we cut out. So we're gonna continue working on the concept of morning, afternoon, and night. So this one is morning, this is afternoon, and this one is nighttime, because at nighttime is when the moon comes out, right? So in the morning is when the sun comes up, lights up the sky, and then in the afternoon is when we do things and we play and we have a good time, and then the morning, and then at night is when we get ready to go to sleep. So let's look at these pictures and try to figure out when they happen, okay? Can we do that? So when do we normally take a bath? How about this little boy? He's playing at the park. When do we normally play at the park? daytime so in the morning or like in the afternoon like around lunch time oh yeah yeah kind of depends and then how about when do you normally eat cereal but there's morning and then there's afternoon so morning is like when we wake up when we have our breakfast right and then what comes after morning afternoon and then this is when do we normally have our lunch? In the afternoon. That's right, in the afternoon. And what do we normally eat in the morning time? I don't know, breakfast. Morning we have breakfast, sometimes it's cereal, and then in the afternoon we have our lunch. What do you like to eat for lunch? Chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets. And also grapes. And grapes, okay. And strawberries, like fruit salad. Okay, we can do that. That's actually gonna be your lunch today. And then what do we normally eat when that like she knows the difference between morning and night but distinguishing between morning and afternoon is something that has been harder so we'll keep working on that and I'll try to make a mental note also
to see if there's other ways that I can try to help her identify that. Maybe I'll look for like a YouTube song that talks about the different times of day and we'll watch that and use any other resources that I can find to Hello. help her teach that. All right, I have no idea if you guys can even see me in the frame because it's so bright out here, but I brought the kids outside and we are gonna do that little chalk shapes activity. So we're gonna get some energy out before nap time, quiet time. That's what we're gonna play. Okay, so this isn't the very best because Riley, of course, wanted to also assist in the drawing, but I could have come out here first and drawn all these. So we just took some chalk, drew the different shapes, the heart, square, triangle, circle-ish over there, um, and then rectangle. We're gonna stand on the mat. All right, we're gonna run to the star. Run to the star. Now, now Riley, run to the square. Jackson, run to the circle. Jackson, run to the rectangle. Riley, run to the heart. Uh, Jackson, run to the triangle. Good job, Gordo. All right, now everybody run to the rug. Over here, run to the rug. It's so funny because we did this game not too long ago and he had a hard time with some of the shapes but we've now done this you know a few times so and he's gotten more used to like the shapes so he's gotten better at it that's the star what about the rectangle where's the rectangle that one is square rectangle where's rectangle we gotta work on rectangle all right how about heart where's heart heart Good job. How about circle? Where's circle? <laughs> Good job. Good morning, guys. So it is the next day. It's the next morning. I wasn't planning on, like, working on anything with the kids this morning. They usually just, like, have their breakfast and play. But Jackson brought me the um, ABC puzzle this morning. He saw this and grabbed it and seemed super interested in it. So I just kind of went with it. And I've been sitting here working on the alphabet puzzle with him. I try to make it a point it where like, well. if he seems really interested in doing something, okay. then I'll kind of stop whatever it is that I'm doing so that I can work with this on him. So this is the ABC puzzle we have. So the first thing I did was like, I sang the whole alphabet with him, like pointing at all the letters. Mm -hmm. And now we're just gonna work on the puzzle. That's R. How do you say R? You say R? <coughs> here. He's kind of frustrated because he has to turn it. All right, do you want to find A? Do you know where A is? No, this one is A. Look, A, where does A go? So we're gonna do that for a little while and that way he can get just some exposure to the letters. And this was something that was totally organic, something that he was interested in, brought the puzzle to me. So that's what we're gonna do with him for a little while. S. Okay. You gotta flip it around. Like this, S. S. What about B? Where does B go? B, like, yeah. Good job. And E, do you know where E goes? Good job. Okay, so same with Riley. I wasn't prepared to really like start schoolwork this early, but she said, mama, let's do schoolwork. So I always prefer like what to like do schoolwork when they show interest as opposed to like, all right, it's time to do schoolwork. So we're gonna switch things up. I'm gonna rearrange my schedule so that we can do some schoolwork. So yesterday we did the curriculum from the Horizons book, we did all of that. You might have noticed that in that lesson, there wasn't a whole lot of math in those worksheets. So that's one of the things that I've said about the Horizons curriculum. I feel like there's not always enough math in it. Again, this is a pre-K for three curriculum, so I mean, for three-year-olds, it's not really supposed to, I guess, have as much math. But I always like to supplement with some kind of like little workbook or something. We were using one from, I, forgot, I think Scholastic maybe, like one of those super cheap workbooks that you can get from Amazon for like three bucks. But we finished that one. We went through the whole thing. So this is another one that I picked up from Amazon. It's a pre-K through K beginning math. So I'll have this one linked down below too, but we're just gonna do a couple pages from it today. This one's gonna work on concepts like biggest, smallest, 
what else can we do today longest and shortest and then there's other things in here like zero one two three right. this is a page where they have to trace some numbers work on recognizing those numbers hey. counting animals so we'll do a few pages from this see how far we want to get into it but anyway we'll do a couple pages from this get her you know working on some math and then we'll see what else we can do today all right so we're gonna do some math are you ready yeah so this one says color the biggest object in each row okay so which one of those shoes is the biggest This one. That's right. Well, that one's for for for, for big for for grown ups. For grown ups, this is a grown up shoe. Yeah. Okay. This is a kid shoe. And this is a baby shoe. Oh, very good. So you can work on that page, and then I'll come check it for you. Okay. okay. If you need help, tell me. Hey, Jackson. I'm gonna color with some light. Blue. You're gonna color it a lot of different colors. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm gonna change when I'm gonna go outside, okay? Okay, well first we gotta do your work. Now which one is the biggest butterfly? Ba -da -ba -da -ba 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 -da -ba -da -ba -da Yeah, yeah, la 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 we're working on smallest now. So which is the smallest shirt? Good. And smallest shorts? Which ones are the small? Good job. And the smallest of the shoes? So who's bigger, you or Jackson? Mama. Me. Yes, and who's smaller, you or Jackson? Jackson. Me. Yeah. Yeah, you. All right, now. That's all you want to do? And then maybe after I do Mimi's um, shark craft, I can do some more. Okay, so she wants to go and do some kind of craft instead of continuing to work on her workbook. So that's fine for now because it's still early in the day. And if she wants to work on it at some point later today, we can sit down and do some more pages. But she did biggest and smallest and she was like coloring, you know, she took her like five hours to color that butterfly because she did all the colors. But that kept her entertained for a little bit, so we'll keep working on that in a little while. Snowy. Okay, so it's a little later, and we are doing a little activity over here. So I had gotten oh. these like little popsicles, and it's just like ice in a mold. And I got some salt, and we're trying to do the activity of showing the kids how when you've got salt and like ice, like the salt melts the ice. So it's like a little hands-on activity they have fun because they are all full of water and it's just something different so what another thing what? you can do is you can use like some kind of mold to put like little figurines inside and then they have to like what? dig out the figurines it... with the salt that you just clean your hands it's just a little bit of salt but you see like this used to be a lot oh, thicker and now no. it's going melting because of the salt so things like that are super easy like literally i put together like the mold i put the water in the molds yesterday and like the easiest thing of life some salt some regular iodized salt um and they can sprinkle it and play and it was raining yesterday so like the table is full of water anyway so something a little different i can use it to explain some kind of concept to them and it's like a little easy sensory activity for them what is this did you put ice all over it yeah? Oh. Is it melting? Yeah. Is I don't see it melting. Yeah, yet. look, the pineapple's almost gone. You see how the pineapple used to be really, really big and now it's getting small because of the ice? Jackson, is the ice cold or is it hot? Oh. oh how are you doing? It's cold? Uh, oh. So teaching oh. him also what's cold, oh. what's hot. I'm gonna oh. come check on it. Alright, mama. So we'll do this for a little bit until they melt and then we'll go inside oh. and do something else. All right, so it is a little later today. Um, we spent a lot of time outside today. We're out in the splash pad and all of that. So now the kids have been watching some uh, whatever's on YouTube here. They're having a snack, all of that. And I just got in the mail a new book that I ordered. So I ordered this book that I had seen Kendra Atkins share on her channel. If you don't follow her, I'm sure you guys would like her content. So I saw her 
mention this book and I ordered it because I thought it would be like a good addition to like the books that we have here at home all the time. Riley, do you have to slurp on that? We have a lot of books that we rent at the library, but this I feel like would be a good one to have all the time. So Riley just saw it and she asked me to read it to her or we can go through it learn some things but it's a really beautiful book so like the cover is beautiful but then it has 50 different like moments in nature so this one says a bee pollinates a flower this one says dew collects on a leaf and the illustrations are just beautiful and they're like just very simple to read through i'm very excited because one of the um one of the moments is the whole butterfly through like the chrysalis evolution, all of that. So as we're looking at our caterpillars and we're doing like all the other activities that we're doing about butterflies, like I had mentioned to you guys earlier in the video, we can also read through this. So we're gonna do some reading here on the couch. We do that a lot through the week. Like that's kind of how we wind down either before or after dinner. We just sit here and sometimes they'll just like look through books independently, but she saw this one and asked me to read to her. So that's what we're gonna do. So this is super cute. It's actually, it's not the whole butterfly cycle. It's the cycle of when it actually comes out of the chrysalis. So I didn't know, like it takes two weeks for them to come out of their chrysalis. And then it goes getting transparent. So like these kinds of things are great because I learn alongside with them. These are things that I did not know before. So I'm always like happy to like read them things like this and to learn stuff like this. So what did you learn about the butterfly? This what? What did you learn? What was an interesting fact? Is this one. Which is what? That her wings are crumbled. That her wings are crumbled? Yeah. When she first comes out of the chrysalis. So that's typically something that I do like whenever we read books like this or if I'm reading her a story, I try to ask her afterwards like, okay, what was one thing that you remembered or one fun fact, like she's into facts now. So what's one cool fact you learned? And then that way it gets her thinking about what she just no, read. And then, no, you know, gets her no, thinking about that. Yeah, I think this book is super cute. And I'll have it linked down below in case you want to add this to your collection too. Okay, so we are waiting for dinner. Joe's outside grilling. So in the meantime, Riley said she wanted to do some math. So earlier today, I didn't show you, but she did work on some of these pages. So she worked on like, um, like smallest and largest or longest and shortest. She did a couple of these pages and then she did some tracing like the numbers. So zero, one, two, three, and four. So now she's gonna work on this page, which is circling that number of items. So this is a number. Uh, uh, what number is that? Three and this is three, two. And then is this one three or is this one three? That is a group of three. So you can circle that. Four. Four, so which one is a group of four? And then which one is a group of four there? So this is gonna take longer because we open up an activity to do something simple, but she also wants to color it. So that's fine because she gets to work on her coloring and that's not a big deal. It's not like we're in a hurry. All right, so hello guys. So it is the next day. Um, this morning, the kids and I, we went to the library. So that was like our activity for the day. They have, at least at our library, there's like several times a week where they do like a, they do like a preschool story time and like they have a teacher there, you know, one of the librarians that'll read them stories. They do songs, they sing, they dance, they do all the things and it's the cutest thing, it's free. So I try to make it a point to at least once a week go and participate in that. The kids really like it. So today's theme was all about dinos. And so one of the really cute things about it was that they sent us home with some worksheets. So like this one was something from like one of the stories that they read, what is something that Penelope likes to eat, which was all about the book that we read. It was like Penelope who was eating her classmates. So she can draw that. And then this one was something they sent us home with too, which is like a pre-writing practice where they can work on tracing. You wanna do which one? No, wait, I have to tell my dad something. And you know that you can, and they were singing the dino song that, that we read a long time ago. That was a book that was that we are the dinos. We are the dinos. Wow, that's beautiful. 
Is that how the song goes? Yeah, I think so. Something like that. And then there was another sheet like this. It said, draw a picture of one of your favorite parts of the story. And then she can like dictate it and then I can help her write it. So we're going to work on some of these before quiet time today. Which one do you want to do first? This one. That one? Okay. So you can start off by writing your name up here, okay? So let's get rid of some of these papers. My kitchen table is just full of all these papers these days. So she can start off writing her name. Jackson's in the background over there. What, more cookie? Yeah. Well, I just gave you gummies, so you're gonna have to. Oh, oh, I know, life is hard. All right, so this is something that Penelope likes to eat. So remember the story that we read today? Who was Penelope? Penelope was the dinosaur. And what did she like to eat? I really know. You know? You want to tell me about it? What did she like to eat? I'll, I'll show you. You'll show me? You know what it is? <laughs> what is it that Penelope likes to eat? Um, I'll show you in a minute. I said last year. <laughs> what? <laughs> show your guys what Penelope likes to eat. And just one more touch. One more touch? See what it is. <gasps> what does Penelope like to eat? Penelope likes to eat people. What? <laughs> so yes, Penelope likes to eat people. That's great. But that we don't eat people, right? Yeah. She's just a dinosaur. Yeah. So she was eating her classmates. Mm -hmm. But what does? But then this says this is something that I like to eat. So you can draw here something that you like to eat. Um, I'll draw something that I like to. Eat. What is it that you like to eat? like to eat green apples. Green apples? Oh, that's a beautiful drawing. Look at that. I like to eat green apples. This is sour. Wow, that's actually a very nice, beautiful, easy drawing right there. So you like to eat green apples. Yeah. That's wonderful. I like to eat purple grapes. Oh, so you're going to draw multiple things that you like to eat. Now, I'll show you something else I want to try. Cherries. Cherry? Yeah. Do you like to eat cherries? I want to eat cherries one day. One day? Okay, very good. So there we go. That's just no. like a nice little activity that she was able to do. Gets her thinking about the story that she read today. No. So that is part like, of her homeschool today. I, um, I do have to show you guys too. I have to show you the caterpillars. One of them already started turning into a chrysalis. If I am not mistaken. I don't wanna like, oh my goodness, like I'm so scared to turn them. What if like I turn them and they all fall? So this one over here, right there, has already started to form a chrysalis. I don't know how well you'll be able to see, but that is so cool. We've been watching it since this morning. They're all pretty much hanging, I think. So soon we'll be able to move them into like their little house. So that's something that we've been observing today and talking about. The caterpillars okay so before we do quiet time we're gonna do this one last thing so I had her draw a picture she couldn't remember something from the story or she didn't know how to draw a dinosaur so I just had her draw a picture of Riley at the library so then we're gonna try to have her write down in the little place where she can write her letters I don't Riley know. went to the library so what I'm gonna try to get her to do is I wrote this for her Riley went to the library and I'm gonna work on her copying it over this is something new so we might have to go like word by word or you know like just take some time to work on it but this is a good exercise for them to eventually learn how to, you know, transfer thoughts and stuff onto paper. And it was funny because as we were, um, like I was writing this to her and she was able to tell me that that was the word too because we've been working on her sight words. Her sight words, if you guys didn't watch that other video, um, the first one that I put out, we've been working on these sight words here on the refrigerator for a couple weeks now. It's probably been a few weeks actually. And so several times a day she comes over here and I have her tell me her sight words. So we haven't expanded to it in a bit. Maybe next week we'll start adding a couple words. But because now she knows the word too, she was able to you know, tell me that that's what it said in that um, little worksheet. T-H-E says the. 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 Riley went to the. Water. So you need an E to E. And then I have to do R. Mama, I say one. See, I told you there's enough. 
birthday. Look at you. So look, that is her first attempt at like trying to copy a full sentence over to, you know, her little drawing. So as time goes by, she'll get better at this, just like she's gotten better at her writing her name and all of that. But I think that that was a really good first attempt. So Riley went to the library. Good job, Mama. Yeah, I did. I, I told you there was enough space. Yeah, you did. Okay, now it's time for quiet time. Okay, so it is the next day. Today is Saturday, and it's a pretty chill day today because it's like rainy outside. It's super gloomy. So I'm trying to keep the kids entertained. So we'll probably do some activities. We're starting off today with some painting. So for Jackson, since he wanted to participate, I put out like just an old sheet on the floor. You already got dirty? Oh no, I put out like an old sheet so that it doesn't matter if he, you know, paints all over my floor. And then we've got some, like some of his little cars that they can paint and then they'll wash. I see your beautiful hand. It's so nice. Oh no! Oh no! It's you want to wash your hands? I'll get you a wipey, okay? Okay. So we've got some colors out for him. He can paint his cars. And then I just have an old piece of a box, like some delivery we got. I always try to keep some cardboard so that um, you know, they can paint these. This can be like you know their surface, and maybe at some point he can dip the car wheels, and then maybe I don't know, make tracks or. I don't know, he can use these however he'd like to. Riley set up her babies in the high chair. She was like, oh, the babies want to paint too. So the babies are here just watching them paint. And then Riley over here has her set up. She's got her colors. These are my favorite um, paints, you guys. If you do painting like with your kids, these I find are truly washable. So I have gotten them out of a million different things. So these are always good to have. Like I just bought some new ones because we had run out. And then we've got like little palettes. So they'll be painting I'm today. Get one coat of some white. One coat of some white. And then so the colors can be really bright. Oh, very nice. So you start off with white so that then you put other colors on top and they and they're more bright. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna draw the shapes for you, okay? Do you know what shape that is? Circle. Circle. What about this one? Triangle. Triangle. And what about that one. Heart. Heart. What about that one? Star. Star. And how about... What is that one? Square. Square. And how about... This one? Rectangle. Rectangle. Good job. So there we go. I just took a marker really quick and I put different shapes on here so that we could work on shapes. And he gets some extra practice with that. I mean, you could take this and you could put numbers. You can, I don't know, you could, I could make little parking spots for all the cars. Again, like just using what you have and like whatever skill it is that I want him to work on. This is something that he's doing in a fun way because he's obviously enjoying Painting, he's working on colors. Me. What color is that one? Purple. Purple. Good job. And that one? Me. Green. All right, now you gotta put now you gotta paint it on the board. Can you color the circle? Good. Are you red? It's red? There. Good job. There. Now how about you paint the heart? Can you paint the heart? You can do a purple heart. Oh. It's okay. <laughs> Good job, Gordo. You can get closer. Okay, so it's a little later. Um, the kids had a blast painting. I've got like a bunch of stuff on my floor still. But we're gonna move on to the caterpillars. So all of the caterpillars are officially chrysalises or they started to form their chrysalises. So we're gonna put them in their little house. All right, so what do we got here? Oh, you have can the... you keep this open, <laughs> Riley? Can somebody? Yeah. I can hold it. Okay. I'll hold it. Yeah. Riley, what are we doing? We're making the colors. What if like they fall off? I'm just gonna walk away. Riley, you can come back. <laughs> Why? Wait right now. I don't think the fact of them falling it's affects. Jackson is very interesting. Cocoon. It's not safe yet. 
Ready? Yeah. Right. We're supposed to transfer them to like this little Daddy pretend log. Go. <laughs> you ready, set, go. Oh, that's nice. Can I get some scissors? Are those gonna turn into butterflies? Yay, I'm so sorry. They told them to turn into butterflies. Wow. Oh, they oh, turn too close. That is really cool. That is kind of creepy. All right, we got to put them in their house, and then in two weeks they're gonna turn oh, into one more I need to get. butterflies. All right, so we're gonna zip this up. So no butterflies can get all, all over our house. So it's a chrysalis now, and then in two weeks it's gonna like hatch, and then I hope we can watch it hatch. Yeah, hopefully we can. Okay. Bye. All right. All right, guys, so today is Monday. Today's gonna be the last day that I show you guys this stuff because then I've gotta wrap up this video for you guys. So yesterday was Sunday. We didn't do any kind of schoolwork. We were just hanging out as a fam. But today, um, we're here in the kitchen. Like, this is literally the state of affairs right now. Riley is doing magnets on the um, dishwasher. She found her magnets and is doing some alphabet stuff. So then I've been... Oh, beautiful. So she's been singing the alphabet song. Jackson is now singing the alphabet song. So she's pretending that she's teaching him and she really actually is teaching him. <laughs> so that's what they're doing. And then I had told you guys that I wanted to show you just like a quick little activity of how I do letters with Jackson with like the caterpillar theme over here. So I have these letters that I showed you guys in the last homeschool vlog. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take just his name. I'm gonna take the letters J-A-C-K-S-O-N and I'm gonna show him this. This is our very much loved and used whiteboard. And then I'm gonna have him match the letters onto the caterpillar. This is my drawing of a caterpillar, you guys. Um, that's the best that I could do. Definitely do not have any kind of education in the world of art. Um, but I'm gonna put these like down here for him. I just haven't gotten them all set up. And then that way he can work on matching his name. I want to make sure that they're all capital for now. So I'm like looking for all the capital letters, J, K, S, O, N. And then this way, hopefully it can help him to start to like become familiar with his name. Jackson, Gordo, look, come, we're going to do an activity. So look, all these letters, you're going to put them where they belong. Okay, so like J goes there. Now let's find another one. That's O. Where does O go? Go put it there on the caterpillar. Good job. Is that S? Where does S go? Where does S go? Aha! Go put it there. I can't find S anywhere. Here, I'll give you another S, okay? Jackson, how about this one? This one is N. Where does N go? Where does N go? Go put it. Good job. Mm -hmm. Good job, like that. So there we go. Just something hands-on for him to work on in a fun way. I'm trying to find another S for Riley. Here you go. This is an S. So that is going to be the end of today's video. That is our week of homeschooling. And we're probably gonna end up doing more book work today just because we're still trying to catch up. We're gonna try to finish the rest of the Horizons book. Um, so doing all the letters and all of that. And then once that's done, I hope to make another video for you guys showing you how we do like that summer curriculum from, I think it's Treehouse Homeschooling. That one seems a little bit, you know, a little different and something maybe fun and maybe it'll give you guys some ideas to do with your kids. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought of this style of like seeing several days versus just one full day. Is there any value in seeing this? Like a little bit more big picture? Let me know. But I hope you guys liked it. Hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with us. Um, definitely stay tuned for more videos like this. I have curriculums that I want to review and things that I want to talk to you guys about. So stick around. I'd love to have you here. And if you enjoyed it, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you happen to be new. And I will see you guys all in the next video. I love you guys. Bye, guys.